Hello, my most amazing artists. Today you're going to be finishing up your drawings of your African American heroes portraits for Black History Month. You should have your iPad number written down on that paper that you put with your transparency paper. That way you can get the same iPad if you need to continue tracing. That way you don't have to look up that same photo and can make sure that it fits right on top of it in the same exact space. And there's clips to help with that too. Make sure that if you're not done drawing your contour lines, that you're using a Sharpie to outline all the most important lines of the face, the hair, and the neck and shoulders, whatever's in the picture. You also wanna make sure that you're only working on one side of the art, not both sides. And you can tell this by either if you wrote their name, you'll know that you're working on the right side if it's the right way, and if it's backwards, that's the side that we're going to paint on. So I'm going to use a little piece of sandpaper to just lightly sand the face, the shoulders, and the hair. I'm not scratching up my entire paper, just lightly sanding one coat. That way the paint will stick better. By sanding it, it's going to make it the opposite. Right now it's really smooth and shiny, but sanding it makes it a little bit more rough so the paint will stick better and not slide right off. We're going to be using acrylic paint today and you have paint trays with all the colors of the rainbow and skin tones which you will be needing to mix to match your hero's skin tone. So I'm going to start on a piece of scrap paper for my mixing palette. This is a special kind of paper that will not absorb the paint it will be able to use for you to mix today and hopefully not soak into the paper. So make sure you're using the right mixing palette. It's a little bit transparent, kind of translucent. That's going to be what you mix on today. I'm going to look at my photo very carefully to see and match the skin tone. Maybe I take a little bit of brown, a little bit of tan, and a little bit of white. Maybe even a little black to mix the right skin tone. If I look closely at the picture of the artist Jean-Michel Basquiat, the artist that I am making the portrait of, I see that the skin changes. Some parts have highlights, those really white shiny parts. Other parts have shadows that are a little bit darker. So I'm going to paint those first. I'm also going to put anything that's white down first, like the whites of the eyes, including the little highlight inside of the pupil. And I'll also paint the iris of the eye, the part that gives it color. Because since this is a reverse painting, anything that you lay down first is what you're going to see on the other side. You're building up layers and layers of paint and the very first one is the most important. So anything that you want to make sure gets seen, put it down first. So it's probably a good idea to start with the eyes because then you don't have to worry about painting around them. If you get some skin color on top of the eyes it's or lips, it's not going to matter because that's already laid down and it starts to dry. Acrylic paint does dry pretty fast. If you do make a mistake and need to wipe it off, you can use an art wipe, but it's not so easy to get off once it dries, so make sure if you do make a mistake that you do it right away. Acrylic paint is also expensive, so we don't want to waste it. We're not going to erase the whole thing today and start over at any point, especially because Black History Month and our African American Read-In event is next week, so you want to make sure that you are doing your best work and working efficiently and quickly. I'm adding some shadows with some darker colors and adding lighter ones in the places where I see highlights. By doing this, it's going to give the real effect of the photo, which is very photorealistic style of painting, just like the artist that we were inspired by does in his portraits. Hinde Wiley pays special attention to these details like the changes in skin color and all of the different values. One color can have several different values by just adding white to make it lighter and black to make it darker. You should pay attention to the values and changes in the skin color. It's not just all one flat color. Same thing for the lips. I didn't just use red, I added some tan, maybe some white to make it a more realistic color. For the hair, it's not just black. I'm going to mix some brown strokes in with some black brush strokes by layering different colors and making sure I'm paying attention to the direction of my brush strokes, it's going to look more realistic. Remember, it's like you're painting on glass. On the other side of the glass, the viewer or you when it dries and you turn it over will be able to see every single brush stroke that you've made so be very mindful that you're painting in one direction and looking at what direction that should go in so if i'm painting hair i'm painting in the same direction that that hair or that braid that he has is going if i'm painting the skin i'm trying to paint in the same direction 
as those highlights or shadows are turning on the face to make it look more realistic and 3D. When it comes to the clothes, you can pick whatever colors you want, but I would suggest looking at the photo. If the photo has something crazy that they're wearing that's a little bit too hard to detail, you can create something simpler for that person to wear. Now we're not going to do anything in the background this time. Because we're painting in the style of Kehinde Wiley, next week after these are dry, we will be layering on a separate piece of paper for the backgrounds. We'll be talking about that next week. Today, all you have to do is just paint your African American hero to the best of your ability. And remember, acrylic paint does dry fast, but probably not fast enough for you to flip it over and leave it on your table. You should always have it with the paint side up or the backwards way while you're painting. If you do want to hold it to turn it over, it does look a lot better. So you might wanna check that out every once in a while. Even if it's not looking so good, flip it over and you will be reminded how awesome it looks on the other side. You can flip it over every once in a while to check that, but just make sure that you don't lay it down on your table or it'll ruin that paint. Again, if you do need to clean up, just use an art wipe. Always wash your brush in between switching colors as well because somebody else probably doesn't want that same tone as you're mixing or the shade or the tint. Make sure you're only mixing on your mixing paper, not in the paint tray, and washing your brush in between your color changes. When you are done, make sure you turn it over and see if any of the brush strokes look transparent. If the paint looks transparent in any of the areas on the hair, the face, the neck, or the shirt, then you wanna make sure that you do more layers. I flip it over and realize that I really do need several more layers to make it look more realistic. When I do the layers though, the cool part about this is I already have the first layer of color down. So now I can just lay one solid color on top of that and that's okay because all the other colors that mixed are below it. It'll dry pretty quick, but we do still need to put these on the drying rack. Because this transparent paper is so flimsy, I would suggest leaving a piece of paper underneath it with your name, class code, and maybe even iPad number on. Make sure that you bring that paper underneath it to the drying rack when you're all done. Then you'll clean up your hands, your area, your brushes, put the lids on your paint trays, and return your iPads. Next time we'll be working on those backgrounds and looking especially at the kinds that Kehinde Wiley made for his portraits. All right, awesome artists, have a great time, and I cannot wait to see what you create.